Hello and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. Today I am bringing you a mega spec showdown between the Tesla Model Y, Volkswagen ID4, Nissan Aria, Chevy Equinox EV, Honda Prologue, Mustang Mach-E, and the Ionic 5. Let's get into it. <laughs> All right, everybody, so we're gonna do a spec showdown with all of those EVs that I just listed off. We've done them before, I just haven't given it a fancy name before. I thought maybe it might spice things up and make people a little bit more interested. But I was looking at the market and there's so many uh, SUV type vehicles that are available and I'm sure people are out there cross shopping them figuring out which one to buy. And I'm gonna be honest, I think that depending upon your needs, your likes, your wants, any of these could be good options. You just need to kind of decide that for yourself. So in this spec showdown, I've compiled all of the information I think that most people would want to know. If there's anything that you would want additionally, uh, if you put it down in the comments, I'll look it up and I'll tell you. I'm pretty good at uh, reading the comments and responding to people. So before we get into it, if you haven't already, please uh, subscribe to the channel. I do more stuff like this. I'm gonna be covering the Chevy Equinox EV a lot coming soon, and then hopefully eventually the 2024 Volkswagen uh, ID4 Pro once we figure out all those uh, things financially because our ID4 kinda took a, took a dive uh, as far as value is concerned. So let's get into our showdown. So again, here are the EVs we have competing. We've got the Model Y, rear-wheel drive, tw the 2024 Volkswagen ID4 Pro rear-wheel drive, 2024 Nissan Aria Venture Plus front-wheel drive. It's kind of confusing because the, there's the Engage and then the Engage Plus. But as far as big batteries concerned, the Venture Plus is the base spec. And again, I'm comparing all of the base spec big batteries for these vehicle vehicles. The 2024 Chevy Equinox EV, the front wheel drive. The 2024 Honda Prologue EX, front wheel drive. The 2023 Mustang Mach-E Select. And that's actually not standard range. Let me fix that. That's going to be the extended range. There we go. The 2024 Ionic 5 SE rear, rear wheel drive. And with the Equinox EV, that is going to be the 1LT all these vehicles are currently on sale except for the 1LT uh, of the Equinox EV. And I know people are going to be interested in that. And that's why I included that. Also because it has that really attractive entry point of $33,600. So I don't want to take too long in this video. I'm going to go through quickly, share my thoughts, highlights about the best of everything, the worst of everything. So as far as price is concerned, we have the Equinox EV 1LT being the cheapest before the tax credit. All of these vehicles are without destination, but most destinations for these vehicles are essentially the same. So it wins by a lot. The next cheapest EV is going to be the Aria Venture Plus at $41,190, so by almost $8,000. And it's not going to be the best equipped, but it's got good range and hopefully access to the Tesla supercharger network eventually. The most expensive being the Honda Prologue EX, which is their base trim. And you still have to uh, spec up to get some nicer features that you will get standard in a lot of these other trims, which is not the greatest. But as far as looks are concerned, I think it's a really nice looking vehicle, the Honda Prologue. Now for the tax credit, the Model Y, ID4, Equinox EV, Prologue, and that's it. Those qualify for the tax credit. The Aria, Maki, -E, and Ionic 5 do not qualify for the tax credit. However, you can get the tax credit through the lease loophole if they're offering it, which uh, some do, some don't. Moving on, when we look at the price after the tax credit, which is always interesting, the, the Chevy Equinox still is winning at $26,100 starting price before uh, shipping and everything else. And the Ionic 5 is the most expensive because it doesn't get the tax credit, unfortunately, at 
50. And when you're, if you're shopping between a base Ionic 5 and a base Chevy Equinox and you don't care about charging, uh, $19,000 is a lot cheaper. <laughs> now moving on to range, the Tesla Model Y has 320 miles of range and it is actually tied with the Mustang Mach-E Select Extended Range. And the Equinox EV is only one mile off, the lowest being the Volkswagen ID4 Pro. I will say one thing when it comes to comparing ranges, Tesla tends to be a little bit more rosy in their range. Uh, so that is worth noting, but we will see how things shake out when the Equinox comes out and we actually do a range test on that if it gets 319 or better or worse, we'll have to find out. As far as max charge rate is concerned, the Ionic 5 is the winner here with 240 kilowatts and it sustains it for a while. And it also is the fastest 10 to 80% charging. Now I didn't include 10 to 80% charging, which I would have liked to on here because I was not able to get all of that information for all of these cars. But it is worth noting that the Model Y and the Ionic 5 are gonna be your fastest charging vehicles if you care about that. And your slowest charging vehicle is likely to be the Mach-E, Honda Prologue, Chevy Equinox EV. The Aria is not terrible, but it's pretty close to those. They're all pretty, pretty, pretty close as far as charging time is concerned. Uh, and again, look, I'm finding typos left and right on here. That's the 2024 Mustang Mach-E, which has a little bit faster charging than the 2023 and previous generation models. Moving on, Tesla wins with the storage or the cargo volume. This is with the rear seats folded down 76 cubic, cubic feet. The second best being the ID4. That's what we have and it is great for us. This does not include the front space. So you get even a little bit more with the Model Y and the front space. Additionally, the Mustang Mach-E has a pretty good front and you'll get that as well. The uh, Ionic 5 does have a front, but it's not worth noting. And then all the other veh vehicles are frontless, unfortunately. Um, I put the 0 to 60 on here. I don't particularly care about the 0 to 60 because if I'm buying an SUV, I'm probably not that concerned about performance. But if you are concerned about performance, here are the numbers. The Mach-E has the best, and of course, you can spec up from the base Mach-E and get even better performance. Uh, same goes with a lot of these cars. If you spec up, you get all-wheel drive, you're gonna get better 0 to 60. But for me, I don't particularly care probably all these front wheel drives are going to feel the most lethargic and then the rear wheel drives even if they have a similar time are going to feel a little bit better especially when you're at speed for moonroof the only one that comes standard with the moonroof is the tesla model y but each of these models if you spec up you can get some sort of moonroof and it's worth noting that at least in the chevy equinox ev i'm not sure about the prologue but you can get uh, one that actually opens up, which is always nice to have. As you can see, it's raining <laughs> on my, my moonroof. For the advanced driver's assistance systems, each of them have their own. Some are better than others. Uh, the Tesla system autopilot is very good. Travel assist, I love. I don't have a lot of experience with all the other systems. I'm not a big fan of HDA2. HDA1 comes standard on the base trim here. Now, as far as hands-free driving is concerned, three of these have hands-free driving. Super Cruise and Blue Cruise for the Chevy Equinox EV and Mustang Mach-E respectively are true hands-free and work great because they have pre-mapped roads. For the Tesla Model Y, it has FSD. Currently, as of today, June 5th, because you have to talk like that when it comes to Tesla, it is not technically hands-free, but allegedly the update that's coming is going to be hands-free with no nag on highways. So we'll see if that pans out. If that does, then it can definitely add that on there as another good um, hands-free driving system. Moving on to battery preconditioning. All of the vehicles now, thankfully, have some sort of battery preconditioning. Tesla is probably the most... In intuitive it works uh, really great but all the other ones have it the id4 when you the new one when you navigate will precondition or you can do manual preconditioning and so yeah there's that you don't have to worry too much about that 
As far as route planning is concerned, all of them have some sort of route planning. It's worth noting the Chevy and Honda, which are both uh, all TM ver uh, platform cars, uh, have the Google navigation. The rest have their own versions. And then lastly, my recommended trim and price. When you look at f what you get for what you pay, the 3LT looks really good. You get ventilated seats, surround view monitor, you get heated front and back seats, heated steering wheel, heated wiper blade park. I mean, like I could go down the line. There are just so many features that you get in the Chevy Equinox EV that make it worth it and a good buy. Go, looking over at the Aria is also worth looking at. I, cause with Nissan, it's really tricky cause they have so many different trims. But when you look at it, the Evolve Plus is a really, really good trim. It is similar to the Chevy Equinox EV3 LT where it just has so much included in it. And then you look at the price, especially since they dropped the prices for this model year and it's it's worth getting. The range is not as good as the Venture Plus. It's like two in the 280s but it's a really nice car. Charging's not great, but it's also not bad because the curve is just so flat. So I would, I would say it's worth taking a look at that. Obviously the Model Y is a great car. People love it. It's the best selling car in the universe. Uh, so you could definitely go with a Model Y and be happy. And they did, uh, they opened up the rear wheel drive. So now it has the full battery. That's why it has the bigger range now and the max charging speed of 250 kilowatts. Probably the worst when I was looking at them would be the Honda Prologue. It starts really expensive and then you still have to spec up to get better stuff and stuff that you would get in the Chevy Equinox or even the Aria. So I don't know about that. Always love old faithful Volkswagen ID4 Pro. It is a little bit pricey comparatively and to get a lot of the same features you would get in the Equinox or Aria, you'd have to spec up all the way to maybe even Pro S to get the surround I don't even know if they're adding the surround monitor. They're, they're, they're supposed to for the ID4 this model year, but I'm not sure if they ended up doing that. If I left a car out, I'm sorry. I've been working on this for a while and I, it's trying to like make decisions and think what should I put in? What shouldn't I put in? This is why I decided. If you want to say your thoughts about another car down below, that's fine. Again, I left out stuff like the Lyric and the Blazer. I'm trying to think of some other vehicles I left out. I can't, I can't think of any right now because my brain's not working, but yeah, so I, I didn't include everything. I get it. I get, oh, EV6 I left out as well because it's it's a little bit smaller the way it was. And I don't know. This this is what I chose. So here here's what you get. Hopefully you enjoyed the content. Um, let me know down below what cars you like, what cars you're shopping between. I'll give you my opinions. I don't have any strong opinions one way or other when it comes to the car for all these. I think they're all really great options. Obviously, I love the Volkswagen 94. I'm going to be getting this Equinox, the Equinox soon, but I think all these are great options. I know people who own Ionic 5, Mach-E, Tesla Model Y. They love them. They love them. They love them. So let me know down below. Thanks again for watching. If you haven't already, please remember to give a like, a subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow me on X, follow my sister channel, EV Charging Site Reviews, and I will catch you all next time.